Today I'll be going over Chrome OS Flex, and specifically, what is Chrome OS Flex? Well, you've probably heard of Chrome OS, Google's operating system that runs on Chromebooks, which is their line of laptops. And you may know that in Chrome OS, the user is mostly in the web browser, which by default is, unsurprisingly, Google Chrome. Chrome OS Flex is a version of Chrome OS that you can install on any computer. It doesn't have to be a Chromebook. Now I'm gonna be installing Chrome OS Flex on a spare computer that I have lying around that's not being used and play around with it a little bit to show you what the user experience of Chrome OS Flex is like. So let's get right into it. All right, so now in order to download a copy of Chrome OS Flex, you're gonna head over to this page which I'll have linked in the description, which goes over how to create an installation media for Chrome OS Flex. Now, their recommended option is to use the Chromebook recovery utility. Unfortunately, that's only available on Windows or Mac. So for Linux, you're gonna have to use the more complicated method, which I'm about to show you. But if you're on Windows or Mac, you just use the Chromebook recovery utility and just select Chrome OS Flex and there's instructions walking you through that on here. But if you're on Linux, what you're gonna do is scroll down to download from Google and then click this Chrome OS Flex installer image, which will give you the actual Chrome OS installer image. What you do is just download this, unzip it, which I've already done here. So what you're gonna do is right click in your file manager and click open in terminal in your downloads directory or wherever you placed this file. I believe most Linux file managers have it. I know Nautilus, which is the default on Ubuntu and any GNOME based distribution has that option when you right click. But anyway, what we're gonna do is type dd if equals go back to our file manager copy the file name of our chrome os installer image and paste it in our terminal go to space of equals and then you're going to open up your disk utility now if you don't have your usb drive that you're going to use as your chrome os installer media plugged in yet now would be the time to do so and that should be the only drive plugged into your system while you're doing this just to avoid confusion so you don't accidentally erase the wrong drive. So now I have my drive which I've actually already done this on so I'm just typing out this command for demonstration purposes but I won't actually run it in my case because that'll actually take a while but you get the idea. So you're gonna click on your flash drive in your disk utility and then find your device label, which will be something like dev sdb. Now, where this is will vary depending on what disk utility you're using. I'm using GNOME disks, so for me it'll show up here. We just note that down, and then type it into our terminal, like so. Now, before you run this command, I'd strongly suggest just make sure that there's nothing on this drive that you need, because it will be erased. And now type space bs equals 4m space status equals progress. Now this part is actually optional, but I prefer to have it, especially considering that this will actually take a while to run, because then it'll actually show me how far along it is in the flashing process, which gives me confidence that, yes, this is actually working and it didn't just get stuck somewhere. But anyway, once you've got that command typed out, it should look something like this. Then you just hit enter. Oh, I actually forgot to mention that you need to have sudo at the beginning of it. So you want to do sudo ddif equals the file name for your Chrome OS flex installer, OF equals your USB drive that you're gonna be using as your Chrome OS flex installation media, B 
BS equals 4M, status equals progress, but your command should look something like this. Once it does, just hit enter, punch in your password, and it'll start flashing. Now, I'm not gonna do that because I've already done that in preparation for this video, since that actually takes a while. But anyway, once that's finally done, you can switch over to your Chrome OS PC. All right, so now you're gonna take your Chrome OS install media, plug it into the target computer, and boot it up, and then immediately mash its boot menu key a bunch of times until you get to the boot menu. Now for this laptop, the boot menu key is F9. However, on your computer, it might be escape, F2, F12, delete. You can look that up or just do trial and error. But anyway, once you're there, you're gonna boot from the USB drive, which ideally should be the only one plugged into your target computer just to avoid any confusion, and then just wait for the Chrome OS Flex Instar to boot up. All right, so now once this boots up, we can go try Chrome OS Flex just by following the on-screen instructions here or clicking Browse as Guest, but I'm gonna go install Chrome OS Flex. It'll just warn us to have a backup of the data, but I don't have anything on this computer that I'm just using for demonstration purposes, so I'm okay to go install Chrome OS Flex. Yes, install Chrome OS Flex and erase the hard drive. Now before you do this, I'd strongly recommend just check to make sure that there's nothing on your target computer that you need, because it will be erased. And if there is, then you wanna have a backup of that. But I know that I have nothing on this target computer that I need, so I'm good to go. But anyway, now it'll go install Chrome OS Flex. So now this will take a while, so I'll speed this up. All right, so now that the Chrome OS Flex installation is done, it's booting up right now. Once it finishes booting up, I'm gonna get it all set up and play around with it for a little bit. All right, let's get started. I'm gonna connect to my Wi-Fi network real quick. There we go, who's using this device? Just me, since this is just for demonstration purposes. And I'm not gonna sign into this Chromebook. I'll just browse as guest. But if you would like to, you can go set up your own Google account. And I'm not going to send usage and diagnostic data. It's not like Google would be really interested in what we're doing here anyway. Because again, this is just for demonstration purposes. And it immediately boots us into Google Chrome because as you may know, Chrome OS is mainly for web browsing. But I want to take a look at the file manager before we go much farther. Pretty simplistic, we've just got downloads and my files. And if we right click, we can create a new folder, call it whatever we want, like documents, like so. There we go. And by the way, if we look at the background, I actually do like it. But anyway, we've got settings, explore, camera, scan, files, and terminal. Let's take a quick look at Explorer. This looks like an introduction to Chrome OS. And we can look at what's new. Trackpad scrolling is backwards, I just noticed. Hate that. So let's go into settings and change it. I think it would be under accessibility, cursor and touchpad, mouse and touchpad settings. I don't actually like to have tap to click on, but touchpad acceleration is fine for me. Maybe it's under device, touchpad. No, is it under advanced? Oh, okay, I just didn't see it there, but let's enable reverse scrolling, which is what I'm used to. By the way, this is Chrome OS version 107.0.5304.110. That's a mouthful, I know, but let's see if there's updates. If you've been paying attention, you might notice that the version that I just installed is a month old at the time of recording this video, but actually that'll take a little while, so let's just leave that to run in the background. I wanna go take a quick look at Terminal and look at the developer options to set up Linux. Oh, really? It's not supported on my Chrome device? Really? That sucks. Okay, so I guess this does nothing in my case. And by the way, the menu on the bottom right here, we've got our 
Exit guest, power, settings, Wi-Fi, notifications, screen capture, dark theme, keyboard layout, night light, volume, battery. And you've got our calendar here, along with our photo gallery, or just gallery. Now there's nothing in it. You've got a camera app. There you go. You can see my iPad that I'm using to record this. You can do video, photo, scan for QR codes. That's pretty nice to have. Let's look at what this scan app is. What I figured for scanning stuff with your scanner, which I do not have available right now. But anyway, let's get into the heart of the OS, which is the web browser, and let's go visit a really cool YouTube channel. And there's my channel trailer for people who are not subscribed, and I can watch a video here. Let's look at my latest video. I can watch it and scroll along it, and I got my options here and the comments. I know I haven't posted in over a month. My apologies, I've just had a lot going on in my life lately outside of YouTube, but anyway, I think this is also the perfect opportunity to give a shout out to my subreddit. Just give it a second to load in. But I have this set up for community discussions about computers and technology, especially Linux, since this is a Linux channel. And it can also be used for inquiries for technical support and discussions about the channel and videos on it. Now, keep in mind, this is meant to be a community thing, so it won't necessarily be me responding, but given the activity on it, which is none right now, but probably will be, at least for now. Oh, it just notified me that we can restart to update this. We could take a look at that later, but anyways, it's linked on my channel banner if you're on desktop and on my channel's about page. And I think this is also a great opportunity to talk about channel memberships on my channel, which you can find with this join button if you're on desktop or through a link at the bottom of my descriptions on my newer videos. They're just $4.99 a month and in exchange for supporting the channel, you get loyalty badges next to your name in comments and live chat for new members for one to six months, for six to 12 months, and for 12 months plus. And you got some custom emoji to use in comments and I'll add more to this as my channel member base grows, and then you get one day early access to new videos, meaning that you get to see new videos the day before they go live, and I'll respond to member comments first. And I also have a members only Discord server, which is another place to have discussions about the channel and technology in general, except this one is for members only. So you have to purchase a channel membership to get on that. But anyway, enough talk, let's get on with the video. It's got this update to install, so let's see how that is to update. Okay, it just restarted and the update is done, similar to what it's like restarting for a Linux kernel update. But anyway, I'm gonna click browse as guest again and, and agree to the terms and conditions again. And another thing to note about guest mode is that any files you create won't be preserved, meaning that they won't survive a logout or a reboot. And I do notice that this new print job app is there. Pretty self-explanatory. But anyway, I'm actually curious to see what it's like to set up a Google account on this thing. So I'm gonna set it up for me. Pardon me while I Sign in. Yep, I'll agree to the terms and conditions and not send diagnostic data or any other data. At least that's optional. And I'll choose the dark theme and not sign up for Chromebook tips and offers. There we go. And I should have known this, but when you sign into Chromebook, you get this background along with a more full set of apps. You get all the Google apps, including Google Drive, the whole Google Docs suite, YouTube, Google Maps. Let's see if Terminal will work now. Okay, we can actually turn on the Linux development environment when we're not in guest mode. Let's just install this virtual machine. All right, so now we've got to our terminal, and I'm just going to run a couple Linux commands namely uname dash a. This looks like 5.15.95, whatever. Let's see if the sudo command is there. Yes, it is. How about ls? Yeah, it looks like it does exist. Okay, 
and we can leave the app. And we've got tools to manage the Linux development environment, including an option to change the disk size. And by the way, if you want to get apps for Chrome OS, you'd get them from the Chrome Web Store. That's the app store for Google Chrome and Chrome OS. And by the way, the size of the hard drive I'm installing this on is a terabyte, even though a little bit of that has already been taken up. And I think this is measuring in Gibby bytes, not gigabytes. And you can go look up the difference yourself. And it could also be impacted by partitioning. But anyway, I think that's it for this video. And that concludes this video. Give it a like if you liked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.